Hey guys, um, today is Monday and I have a passage to read from my novel, The Soldier and the Stripper. Um, first of all, I want to say a really big thank you for um, you, you helping me get up to 324 reads. Oh wow, I'm just amazed and I'm just honored. I'm just, I'm just totally, um, just gobsmacked at what the Lord has been doing and the people that have been reading uh, these books. Ah, uh, no, not these books. Uh, the Soldier and the Stripper. I really am so honored and so blessed to be gifted to be to be gifted to write what he tells me to write um today's passage is quite long but i tr i tried to see a way i could cut it out but the lord said to read it so if you bear with me i'm not the best reader in the world but if you bear with me we'll get through it together um, this is at the point where uh, Florence and Clayton are married and F um, Florence is working at a diner and Clayton is trying to find a job and he's having a hard time finding a job and um, after a particular uh, particularly um, bad episode with his PTSD he bumps into he um he um his pastor sees him um outside um after after the episode and his pastor is driving him home and on the way home his pastor is telling uh, Clayton his testimony how he came to Christ and that's why I couldn't cut any of it out because it's so powerful I wanted to uh, read it um, carefully so here we go It says this. It says, this is a pastor talking. It says, I've been through something similar, son. I've never, I've never been, I've never, I've been through something similar, son. I was never in the war, but I grew up in a household of hell. My father, used to used to drink every day and beat my mother and I until we were often both unconscious I begged her to leave him several times but she never did when I was 21, I came home to find him on top of her, beating her to a pulp. All of the years of rage and anger I had built up in me and Without, without thinking, I pulled 
my mother off of him and beat him until the life was drained out of him. I spent the next tw 20 years in jail for my father's murder. And at that time I was angry, so full of rage that I can't even describe it to you. Inside of me was so much pain and hurt. It was like a volcano ready to, ready to erupt. The prisoners were afraid of me. I walked around like a big shot, like I knew everything and no one could tell me anything. I was in solitary confinement more times than I could count. They moved me from a minimum security prison to a maximum security prison. And that didn't even stop me. I was 40. one years old when I got out of prison. But still I was angry at anything. Still as messed up as anyone could ever be. I th thought that life couldn't have anything better for me to go back to, than to go back to jail. I couldn't find a job. I didn't have a wife. My mother wouldn't speak to me it. it was just a mess. But there's something about the love of Jesus that can find you no matter what stage of life you are at, his love and grace and forgiveness is still powerful. It can make a miracle of any mess.
I'd gotten into a fight with an old buddy of mine that for once once in my life I didn't start he pushed me on the ground and was sitting on top of me. I happened to look to my left and there was something on the ground as I looked closer, I noticed that it was a paper. That, that, that had words on it, which said, Jesus saves. And at his name, chains are broken. And demons flee. I had known some things about Jesus growing up in the South. We went to church sometimes and I heard people talk about Jesus and how he saves from all sin and all things that people and all the things that people say about Jesus but I never really got it. But at that moment, when my so-called friend had, had just pulled a knife and was getting ready to slit my throat out of Nowhere I heard my voice say, Jesus, save me. Then, out of nowhere, I heard sirens in the distance. My attacker dropped the knife and took off running. I could hear the police catching up to him. and putting handcuffs on him that night when I was home in my bed I said I don't know if that was 
if that was you, but if it was, I need a change in my life. I'm so sick of being angry and hurt by my past. I need someone to help me through it and if that someone is you, I'm yours. The next day I woke up with the peace that I could not understand. And Sunday of that, week I found a local church and a month Later, I was baptized, and a year after that, I was in ministry. I'm 70, I'm 76 years old. now and I'm a living witness that Jesus changes lives whatever you in whatever you in Florence are going through Clayton. He can handle it if you just give it to him. Give him, sorry, if you just give him a chant. He will love you more than you could ever know. And he wants to change your life. If he can turn a, an ex-convict into a preacher, he can do anything. Including handle your job situation and your PTSD. Okay, so that's the quote. I'm sorry it was so long, but it's so necessary um, to even have that quote because it says that this, this preacher that married Clayton and Florence was an ex-convict. He killed his father and the Lord forgave him and... and um, turned his life around and the, now he was spreading the gospel. I just wanted to say to you about there, although this story is fictional, there is no Reverend Dennis, there's no 
story like that. Jesus is in the business of changing lives. And he can turn your life around if you just give him a chance. If you just say, Lord, if you just come to him with honesty, you don't have to come to him with anything but you, with anyone but you. If you just pour out your heart to the Lord, he's willing to forgive you and you haven't gone too far. You haven't done too much for him to just turn your life around. And even if you don't feel that your life needs to be turned around, there's something in all of us that needs God. It's not a religion, it's a relationship with Christ. And I hope not only do you read the book, but I hope it, it draws you to the Savior because it's so worth it to be a part of his family. And there's nothing that you could, uh, that you would ever do to make him stop loving you. There's, n there's nothing at all. All he wants to do is love on you. Just let him today. Just let him today. As usual, guys, I will put um, the link to the soldier and the stripper, um, the soldier and the stripper on in the description box so you can read it so thank you so much i really appreciate your support um god bless have a great day bye